This video is going to talk about the slope, or the steepness, of a line. When I think about the slope, I like to think of a two-dimensional character in a video game, like Mario, or Donkey Kong, or Sonic, or something like that. These characters typically start off to the left of the screen and run to the right. So if Mario's running, and this is totally uncharacteristic of Mario, but that's okay, when Mario runs in a downward fashion, that's a negative slope. Anything that goes this way is a negative slope. Anything that would consist of Mario running upwards would be a positive slope, or a slope that goes upward. That's one way to remember it. You might also want to remember it using something called Slope Man, which shows you that a positive slope runs typically this way, and a negative slope runs this way. You might also have a line that goes straight up and down. That slope is undefined. You can't define that slope because it's perfectly up and down. But a, something, a line that has no slope at all has a slope of zero. So you have a positive slope, a negative slope, an undefined slope that doesn't... there's no tilt to it, it's just straight up and down and a, zero, a slope of zero, which is a completely flat line. That would be your character running just in a straight line. To actually calculate slope, you need two points. So let's say I have the point 4, negative 2, and negative 2, 7. The slope is defined as the letter m. That's just what it's used in equations. And to find the slope, you want to find the difference of y over the difference of x. Now what exactly does that mean? Well, we have two points here. We have, let's call this point 1, and let's call this point 2. What you're going to do is you're going to subtract y of 2 from y of 1. And you're going to subtract x of 2 from x of 1. Now, does it really matter which point I label point 1 and which point I label point 2? No, it does not. But for the purposes of remembering, you have to take the first point, you have to take it from the same one. So, for example, if I said this is point 2, this has to remain point 2. I can't automatically switch and make this point 2. So what I'm going to do is the difference of y2, so that for point 2, y is 7, and then I'm going to subtract negative 2 from the other point. Over here, point the x of 2 is negative 2, and the x of 1 is 4, so I have negative 2 minus 4. Now I have to remember my add the opposite rules here to help me out, so I'm just going to switch this real quick. 7 plus 2 is 9, negative 2 plus negative 4 is going to be negative 6. So in this case, I could say that my slope is 9 over negative 6, which would mean on a chart, if there's a, ran if there's a point here, I would go up 9, and I would run over 6, because slope is defined as rise over run. So this is always going to be how far up my character jumps, if you think about Mario. And this is going to be how far my character runs. Except I put this here. This is not negative 6. This would be running forward. What I would want to do is I would want to put it back here. This would make it negative 6. That's the difference between negative and positive. You might also write this as negative 9 over 6. It really doesn't matter where the negative sign is. So for here, if I were to start back at my original point, which this is the origin of the graph as well, I would run, I would jump down 9 because there's a negative sign here, and then I would run over 6. And then, then I would be running forward, and that would create a perfectly straight line. Now, could you exactly see where I was placing the points? No, because I made a very, very fast coordinate grid. But it's just enough to kind of show you and give you an example of how to use slope when you have this. If you see a slope written as negative 9 over 6, it doesn't matter where the negative sign goes. What you might have realized 
is you might have realized that this can be reduced. 9 over 6 can be divided by the fractional one 3 over 3 and you can get 3 over 2. These two, as long as you remember the negative sign in there, are exactly the same. It is absolutely okay. In fact, it's encouraged to reduce your slope so that it's easier to read. That way instead of running, of jumping all the way up here and running all the way over here, I could graph it from here and then I would have less chance of missing a point because I'd be moving my points less. Let's take a look at one more set of points so that we can really understand how to find slope. Let's take a look at the point 3, 2, and 5, 1. Now remember that slope is the difference of y this sign, this triangle, is a delta sign. It's, there's a shadow that's supposed to be on one side, but we'll just go ahead and make that a triangle because that's how most people write it with a pencil, over the difference of x. So I'm going to make this point 1. I'm going to make this point 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my y from both sides. So I'm going to say 1 minus, and my other y is 2. My x is 5, my other x is 3, 1 minus 2 is the same as negative 1, 5 minus 3 is 2, so right now my slope is negative 1 over 2, or 1 over negative 2. What this basically means is you will see it written with the negative sign kind of ambiguous, so you can't tell if it's on the upper or the lower side. They do that on purpose because it really doesn't matter where you put the negative sign where you're talking about slope as long as there's only one negative sign. Because this is negative, I know that my slope is going to be somehow slanted in this direction. It might be like this, it might be like that, but it's going to somehow be negative if I look at that slope man that we drew before. Somehow going to be slanted in this direction. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would look like. And now that we have smaller numbers, we can definitely add some points onto our coordinate grid. And of course, these are perfectly spaced out points, as you can tell. So if I start off at the origin, because I don't know where to start off, I just want to show some examples of a slope. I'm going to choose, where do I want that negative sign? I'm going to choose to put the negative sign here first, up in the top. Remember that we're looking at rise over run. So I'm going to rise negative one, which actually means I'm going to fall one. Then I'm going to run two. I'm going to neg rise negative one or fall one, run two. And then let's go back and look at this. Let's do the opposite so we get the other direction going. Now I'm going to rise 1, I'm going to run negative 2, I'm going to fall back or retreat 2. I'm going to do the same thing. And here we have a perfectly straight line. And of course it's perfectly straight because it's drawn on a whiteboard and it's really easy to do that on a whiteboard.